Since this will be a unique operation, I shall explain each stage as we progress. As you know, the patient is suffering from an advanced meningioma. Firstly, we reduce the blood supply to the brain. Once this has been done, the operation must progress at speed and without interruption. Any delay would be fatal. All right, let us commence. Switch on laser lance, six seconds duration. Yes, Doctor. Wait here, Joe. Okay, Dad. Blood flow to right hemisphere, correct. Thank you. on here. Oh, Professor McLean. Good evening. Do come in. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, John. That'll be all for the moment. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Good night. How did it go? Well, so far, all the equipment has been operating faultlessly. Good. Do you still want me to give it a thorough check? If you would, Professor, it would give us additional confidence. Only too glad to help, Doctor. Do you have much trouble normally with the maintenance of this equipment? Well, the servicing is fairly efficient, but with this operation, which is only the sixth of its kind, we can't afford to take any chances. Of course. Are you performing the operation yourself, Dr. Blakemore? Not this one, Professor. There's only one man in the world capable of this type of work. Dr. Emil Kados. He's flying here specially. You see, the patient is a very special man. Oh? Who's that? Maurice Sestora. How nice to see you again. Uh, forgive me, I know the face so well, and yet I can't quite place you. Oh, that is understandable, Monsieur Estoral. We met, uh, but for a few moments, some years ago, when you were awarded the Nobel Prize. Of course, Professor McLean. I have followed your work with interest. That's very kind of you. And if I may say so, I'm a great admirer of your work. Maurice Estoral. Well, well, I never thought I'd meet him again. You know, Joe, he's one of the greatest writers the world has ever known. Is he the man that's having the brain operation, Dad? That's right. I've never heard of him. Of course you haven't heard of him, Joe. But you will when you get older. Whatever may happen in the course of the next few days, one thing's for certain. His books will live on forever. He's not going to die, is he, Dad? Well, I hope not, Joe. Everything possible is being done for him. As a matter of fact, the man who's going to do the operation is flying in at this moment. His name is Dr. Emil Kados. Dr. Emil Kados. Yes? We've just received a radio cable for you, sir. Well, thank you. storm likely to get any worse? I shouldn't think so, sir. Don't worry, it should pass very shortly. Thank you. You're most kind. Yes, it is urgent. Sam, this time I need your help. Okay, goodbye. Terrible. A double tragedy. But, Dad, I don't understand you. 
The paper says that Dr. Kados was one of the survivors. But don't you understand, Joe? He's bound to be injured. And that means he can't perform the operation, which in turn means Maurice Estoral's going to die. Isn't it possible he wasn't too badly hurt, Dad? I suppose it's possible, Joe. That's why Dr. Blakemore and Dr. Sherman are flying out to see him this morning. But I don't hold out much hope. Do you need to see any more? I don't think there's much point. Obviously, he's in no condition to perform the operation. Well, before we leave, let's get a full report on him and fix a private ward. Not a chance. But, Sam... You know I... perfectly well, Mac, that the Big Rat is a closely guarded secret. Only four people know of its existence. Well, why... And can't... that's the way it's going to stay. Sam, when we went into this partnership, it was clearly understood that the Big Rat would save lives. That's right, as many lives as possible. Well, then, if don't you... Don't you see, Mac, once our cover is broken, its use would be limited, restricted, certainly inhibited. But we'd still of save co... lives. Of course we'd still save lives, but not half as many as if we keep it secret. Sam... One of the greatest writers the world has ever known is going to die in a few days. I know that. But, Sam, we can save him. The only man who can operate on him is in a Swiss hospital badly injured. But we can record his brain patterns. And transfer his knowledge to another doctor. I know we've been through this a hundred times. I'm sorry, the answer is no. Why, Sam? Why? Because it means, Mac, that a fifth person would be involved and that is out of the question. Dad, Uncle Sam, why are you both arguing? Why can't I get brained up? Then I could do the operation. Oh, why didn't I think of that before? All we have to do is to take you along to the hospital and say we have a nine-year-old boy who's capable of doing the operation. I'm sure they'll prepare the theatre immediately. But just keep out of this, will you, Joe? Sorry, Dad. Mac, understand this, will you? You have no choice in this matter. A fifth person cannot be involved. Understood? Understood. I still don't understand why we're going to Switzerland. Joe, I've already explained to you. We're going there to record the brain patterns of Dr. Emil Kados. I know that, Dad. But you promised Uncle Sam that you wouldn't involve a fifth person. That's true, Joe. I did make that promise. And I don't break my promises. Dr. Blakemore, I am a man of some maturity. I fear that you have been trying to tell me something. Perhaps you would be a little more explicit. I would rather know the truth. All right. As we explained to you previously, the only man capable of performing the operation is a Dr. Emil Kados. At this moment, he lies in a Swiss hospital critically injured. Yesterday's air crash? That's right. Will he live? Yes, he will live. Well, that's good news. Good news for him, but not for you. I understand that, Doctor. What I don't understand is why you're telling me all this. There's a reason. There is one chance, a very slender chance, and that is for me to undertake the operation myself. The decision is one that I want you to take. Dr. Blakemore, I am not afraid to take a chance. The point is, are you? Attention, please. Attention, please. British National Airways announced the arrival of flight PN407 from London. Well, we'll be at the hospital shortly. Yes, I'll impress that on him. Thank you. I have spoken to the matron. Dr. Kados underwent an emergency operation about two hours ago, but he's not yet regained consciousness. The matron would be happy for you to see him, but she has asked that you stay no longer than ten minutes. Thank you, nurse. Uh, that's most kind of you. Where do we find him? Uh, room 206, on the second floor. Thank you.
Okay, Dad. The balloon's high enough now. Well, let's hope it works. Just relax, then. Just relax. It's not easy, Joe. <laughs> this chair was built for you, not for me. You're quite sure you want to go ahead with this? Yes, I've considered the whole matter very carefully. I've made my decision. I'm going to operate. What do you estimate your chances are of succeeding? I should think as low as about a hundred to one. Nevertheless, one chance in a hundred is better than no chance at all. When do you plan to do it? Tomorrow morning, ten o'clock. And when are you going to tell Monsieur Estero? Right away. So you've made your decision? Yes, I can promise you I'll do everything in my power to make the operation a success. I appreciate what you're doing for me, Doctor. And I want you to know that whatever the outcome, I am grateful. Thank you for that. Excuse me. Of course. Um, Dr. Blakemore here. Professor McLean, how are you? Fine. Yes. Yes, it was tragic. Well, it's strange that you should call at this moment, Professor. I'm going to attempt the operation myself. Well, that's very kind of you, Professor. But to have you in the theatre while the operation is in progress would be a tremendous help. Yes, ten o'clock tomorrow morning. Much appreciated. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. What a piece of luck. Dr. Blakemore has decided to attempt the operation himself. I suggested that I should be there to look after the equipment, you know, in case anything went wrong. And he was delighted. He fell right into my trap. That's wonderful, Dad. So that means we can get into the operating theatre without any trouble. That's right, Joe. But, Dad, you said they wouldn't allow an inexperienced person to carry out this operation. That's why I had the transference, Joe. Don't you see? With the knowledge that I've now got, they'll have no choice.
right. Let us commence. What the devil's going on? Hold it, everyone. Just don't move. Okay, Joe. Lock the door. I said hold it, Blakemore. Professor McLean, have you gone mad? No, Dr. Blakemore, I haven't gone mad. What is about to happen is beyond your understanding. Just do exactly as you're told and nobody will get hurt. You're right, Professor. It is beyond my understanding. But let's get one thing clear. My duty is to my patient. The man is under an anaesthetic. The operation must proceed. I'm going ahead. You can do what you like to me. Indeed, Dr. Blakemore. Your duty is to safeguard your patient. And that's just what you're going to do. If you don't follow my instructions, I will put a bullet through his head. So if it's your patient you're considering, I repeat, do believe it. And may I congratulate you on a very successful operation. You have just saved the life of one of the world's great men. Thank you. Professor, I just don't understand. Neither will anybody else. I will tell people that you carried out a brilliant operation. You and your staff will tell people that my boy Joe, nine years old, successfully carried out one of the most difficult operations in the world. I wonder who they'll believe. Can we go home now, Dad? Yes, Joe, we're going to go home now. Well, it's nice to be myself again. I'm sure I could never have fired that gun so accurately without the brain patterns of a WIN agent. <laughs> and I don't think I could have done the operation without a brain transfer from Dr. Kados. You're right, Joe. I think they both did very well. Thank you.